When normal objects cool down, they also lose energy. Let's say that you have an object that's lost an amount delta theta in temperature. This means there's going to be a corresponding energy that's been lost delta E. The coefficient between them is known as the heat capacity of an object and is typically given the symbol C subscript V. Rearranging for that, we get that CV is equal to delta E delta theta. And just by taking the limit of that, we know that this will be equal to DE by D theta. Black holes are completely different. When black holes lose energy, their temperature actually rises. The only way this could physically be happening is if their coefficient, if their heat capacity is negative. Let's find the heat capacity of a black hole using those equations. If you're wondering where those equations come from, have a browse through my channel, you're going to see lots of derivations from the previous parts of this problem. Okay, well, first off, we can see that the heat capacity is equal to dE by d theta. So let's in investigate both dE and d theta. The first thing I'm going to do is have a look at theta, and I'm going to be, that is a function of m. So in order to find that little tiny infinitesimal delta theta, I'm going to differentiate with respect to m. So what I'm going to get is, uh, let's get another pen that works a little bit better. What I'm going to get is d theta, uh, d theta by dm is going to equal to c3h over 2g k subscript b, Boltzmann's constant. Now the derivative of one over m is minus one over m squared. So one over m squared with a minus sign here, which is going to be really important. Just rearranging that for d theta, this will be equal to minus c3h over two g k b m squared multiplied by dm. Okay, now we have our d theta, which is can go over here. All we need to do is find our little de, that tiny amount of energy. Well, let's use e is equal to mc squared. So I'm going to consider a tiny infinitesimal mass dm that's going to be producing a tiny infinitesimal energy de. So we know that d is equal to dmc squared, and we could just substitute that back into our equation for the specific, for the heat capacity of a black hole, uh, which is just dE, which is going to be, let's just write it as dE over d uh, theta. Now the e is just equal to dmc squared. We're going to be dividing that by this fraction. Now remember, uh, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the inverse. So I'm going to essentially just multiply this by 2g multiplied by k subscript b, Boltzmann's constant, m squared. I'm going to be dividing that by c cubed h dm. And this whole expression will be negative, which is really important. And we can do a little bit of uh, cancelling out, tidy this expression. So we have a factor of the m here, we have a factor of the m here, we have c squared here and c cubed here. And what we're left with is that the heat capacity of a black hole is indeed negative. It is equal to minus two times the gravitational constant times k, which is Boltzmann's constant. And then we have a factor of m squared divided at that by the speed of light and Planck's constant. And this here is an expression for the negative heat capacity of a black hole. Now, this negative expression for the heat capacity of a black hole is crazy. It tells us that as the black hole is losing energy, its temperature is actually rising. We completely do not understand this. We have not We've, we don't have a good model of the nuts and bolts of this and how it's actually happening. How is it happening on a statistical quantum level? I've looked at some research papers and I've linked those in the description. So please have a browse if you're curious about this. Okay, folks, well, hopefully you've, been, you've enjoyed this video and you have an appreciation of some of the weirdness that is surrounding black hole physics. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.